Welcome to another episode of Smash Writing. I'm your host today, Paul, and we are continuing the Chills and Thrills Cecil Hotel. This is part two. We got some ground to cover. If you just uh, tuning into this episode, let me recap. Uh, last week's Chills and Thrills episode part one, Cecil Hotel part one, we talked about the show uh, from Netflix crime scene, uh, The Vanishing at the Cecil Hotel, which involved uh, uh, Lisa Lamb. The, the 21-year-old that went missing in 2013 ended up being found in the water tanks. Now, that was not the only show that got on television, TV, streaming services, whatever you want to call it, um, regarding the hotel. There is another show, a uh, very famous show, uh, Ghost Adventures. This special of theirs, uh, obviously just labeled Ghost Adventures Cecil Hotel, was a nearly two hour long, I think it was actually like 85 minutes, I'm not quite sure. Um, but the premise of this part is now that, uh, and like I said, this came out January 4th, so this is actually first, but I, the way I watched them, I watched the uh, crime scene vanishing at the Cecil first, so I want to talk about that first. Ghost Adventures. I, I'm a fan of the show. I, I really am. Um... You know, we, we follow Zach on, on Twitter and, and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I generally like his stuff. I, I do enjoy Ghost uh, Avengers. It's not too over top. It's not, you know, they don't do anything that's not too believable. Um, so, I, I, this is, like I said, this one was actually uh, when I first heard about Cecil Hotel, so it, it, it did pique my interest, um, but I didn't watch until after the fact. So, we all know what the concept of Ghost Adventures is, is that they go and explore haunted areas that are to be, believed to be haunted by the paranormal. Now, last week's episode, it's talking about Cecil Hotel, you know, the, the, there was a show that just really fo it focused just on Lamb and the disappearance. Here in this episode uh, with Ghost Adventures, they now want to see what makes this place haunted. Who makes this place haunted? Is there a curse? Is there a jinx? Is there whatever? Well, you know, you know, is there unsolved stories about the ones who have committed suicide and that their stories are not being told just yet? This show, uh, this episode piqued my interest because, you know, there's a lot of ground to cover. And Cecil Hotel closed, I believe they said in 2017, but it will be opening back up in, at the end of this year, actually in October this year. So it's going to be interesting. And, and this, I don't know if this is good publicity for the hotel, to be honest with you, that they're not going by, I, I think they're going by the new name of Stay on Main, which is something they did the last, I think like, uh, I think he had to go back to like 2011 or something that they decided to uh, change change the name to Stay on Main Hotel. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, they left some things up that will still say at Cecil Hotel uh, and everything like that. But, nevertheless, uh, <clears throat> the the crew decides to investigate the history of the hotel and see if there is a curse. There's nothing proven to be that there is a curse on the actual hotel. The hotel gained fame really when Richard Ramirez, a.k.a. the Night Stalker, lived there uh, during his killing spree and call it a coincidence whatever you would like uh, it was a perfect hiding spot for him low-key 
tr bad area. I think it was even that bad during the uh, during the 80s, or at least getting there to where you wouldn't really know to look for a killer at Hotel Cecil or Cecil Hotel, whatever you prefer to call it. So the crew goes in and they break down the floors of seeing, um, you know, who's going to reach out to them. They do have claims that Lisa Lamb uh, reached out to them. But they also have a presence that Richard Ramirez's uh, spirit um is the, the main driving dark force behind leading everybody, you know, scaring everybody during this investigation. Now, the crazy thing is, I, uh, Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, if you don't really know, he didn't die in that hotel. He died in prison. Um, actually, uh, just, just about five or six years ago, um... Due, due to uh, cancer, I, I actually believe. So he never even got to... Uh, I'm looking at right now. Uh, yeah, he died in 2013. So he, he didn't die in a hotel. And that's the um, only thing I was kind of confused about. Um, that why would a spirit be in the hotel if it was, in fact, Ramirez that they... They're thinking in um, exactly why would he ha have his spirit there? I mean, maybe it makes sense because that's where his, basically his crime spree, um, you know, followed. And, and that's where he, you know, he stayed at, lived at, and everything like that. So, you know, the... The crew claims that no doubt the Cecil Hotel is, in fact, haunted. But they can't really say if it's haunted by the devil or just the spirits that live there. Obviously, there is a lot of death that has happened at this hotel. Um, you know, going back to the 1920s, uh, a lot of them. But nothing that's too severe... Uh, considering the the history of the hotel, when you go back to the twenties, like I said, it uh, is this place jinx. Probably not. It's probably more or less because of the area and the advertising. You get advertised that you're going to a nice hotel, and then you end up um, going to a hotel that's in a bad area. You're, you're generally going to run into problems. Um, so like I said, it's, uh, there was another show that I came across, and this show was actually on, apparently, I guess, the Investigation Channel, and it was a three-part, uh, series, uh, episode that was called Horror, Horror uh, at the Cecil Hotel, and basically, the, uh, each episode focused on a particular um, case. Uh, the first episode, uh, the one that was, was obviously about Lisa Lamb, where they told a story through m some interviews, but also more reenactments. The, I forgot. The other one was in the... It took place in like the 40s or something like that. Um, oh my god, I can't, I, now I'm drawing a blank, but the last one took place in the 90s, and the last one to me I thought was really the best one, so Cecil Hotel had two murderers live to stay at the hotel for different reasons. We did talk about Richard Ramirez, we know he was there. There was another one in the 90s, uh, murder I say there, Jack under underwagger or something like that um and it explained it started as that they explained he he now you're watching this so you're not knowing if you didn't know the history or know the guy like i didn't know him so i followed along 
I didn't, like I didn't put a face. A journalist comes to the United States from Australia, and he stays at the Cecil Hotel to do a, a, a crime in L.A., but he stays there. So he rides along with the police. The police introduce him to people around Skit Row, and then killings start happening again. And the episode ends to reveal that the journalist is Jack, the, the famous murderer. And you learn that, and I did not notice, but Jack, he actually did what the story said he did. He was a murderer in Australia that got off early, came to America. He was infatuated with Richard Ramirez, so he wanted to copy his every moves and see what he did and did wanted to do what he wanted. He wanted to do what Richard Ramirez did and, and everything like that. It's like really crazy and got me hooked. And it blew it. From everything I watched, it blew my mind that it caught me off guard of how good this particular episode was. And I did not know the full story about Jack until I watched this episode and then I researched him. And I'm like, my God, this is a silly serial killer that convinced the police to put him in the cop car, drive him around on ride-alongs, basically introducing him to what would be his victims and everything like that so it, each episode gave it, it, a little bit more reenactment more of a movie type setting f to tell the stories but with some minor interviews and stuff like that so slightly below uh the vanishing at the cecil hotel now going back to ghost adventures to see you know uh, this special I'm going to give it based off the experience that I, I've had with Ghost Advent Adventures. Like, once again, I look at if the episode or special, let's just call it special, keeps me engaged. It did. Did it do the normal stuff, whether you believe in the paranormal or not? It goes along and, you know, has all these voices, these random noises. And it does all all the tricks and tips and, and, and whatever you want to call it. So it did keep me engaged. Now, overall, I would give this special probably as high as I want to go is probably an 85 as well. Simply because is paranormal real? I don't know. Should it be real? Is it real? These are a bunch of things that I don't know. Now, do I believe... That the Cecil Hotel is cursed, I do not. It's more or less coincidence when you got a hotel that's been there since the twenties in a bad, rough area that's still trying to sell itself as being a great spot for tourists to come in and everything like that. You're going to have problems. The one thing I disagree with with Richard Ramirez is why was his spirit or soul still be at the Cecil when that was it was a big part of his life, but. Most of his life ended in prison. It, you know, once again, if you want to call it fake, the episode still kept me engaged. I'm going to stick with 85% or B plus for the special. Now, the horror at Cecil Hotel. The, generally, I did enjoy two of the three episodes. The one that took place in the 40s, I really wasn't engaged with. I do think the best episode was the final show was involving the serial killer Jack because it told a really good story that you just didn't really see happening until the very end. And it, it made, you know, made sense and, and everything like that. So overall, with that series, I'm, uh, I would give that a 90% or an A, a low A, and so at 90% because I did appreciate the more reenactment. I did, you know, enjoy it from that perspective, but at the same time, still mixing in the interviews with people that were involved with the whole situation and and everything like that. So now there is another part that is going to be for next week. This three part series that I, I wanted to talk about, wanted to break down, you know, each individual, you know, programs and and everything like that. Next week, 
uh, Chills and Thrill Cecil Hotel Part 3, we will be talking about the actual murders or the suicides that took place at the Cecil Hotel. We will separate fact from fiction from some of these shows that did, you know, did they... Did they jump the gun? Did they add a little bit more detail? What was fact and what was not? Um, that is next time. So, until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>